What are we watching here? Printer. Printer. It's a 3D printer. You are going to know a world where there were always 3D printers. But for Papa, it's really new. I had the printer like behind there. We're printing some dice now, right? What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Video. I know. You want to see the video. I want to see the dice come out. Caleb here. I just unboxed a Affinia H480 3D printer behind me, about 1300 bucks, And I'm really excited. Uh, right now it's auto leveling behind me. It has a nice little uh, nozzle attachment, that black thing. And, and it's using that little wheel to sense the leveling. You can manually level it, of course, too. Here's a little printer. Ironically, next to my laser printer. Who knows? Will they replace each other? Will they become one? Will every house have a 3D printer? We're not sure, but they are good in schools. We do know that. Now, why did we buy an Affinia? Well, I think uh, you could buy a MakerBot. You could buy a two PrinterBot simples, which is a good argument for $1,200. Uh, the metal PrinterBots. Uh, you could buy an Affinia for the same price, I think, as a MakerBot Mini. The prices are shifting. We, uh, we love, I've used uh, the PrinterBot, MakerBot, and I've um, been with an Affinia all day at a conference, you know, sitting next to someone using it, and I tried it a couple times. We just went with the Affinia because it slightly felt a little better. It's a little quieter. And the person we know who uses it a lot um, says it's pretty reliable, and the software is pretty simple, and the documentation is good, and, um, and it's pretty small, and I know the printer bots are pretty noisy. Maker bots seem fine. They can be a little finicky sometimes. This Affinia comes with a nice kit. Um, gloves, scraper, tools, software, a nice manual, a um, lot of support online, and uh, it's got some perf board on the uh, platform there. This is the back. All right, I uh, loaded my first print, which is a modifiable ring on Thingiverse, um, which is real easy because I can just put something on the ring and. Rings only take about 16 minutes because they're a nice circle. And here's what the software looks like. And I made a ring for my wife that says I love you. And it seems to be doing okay. There's a nice raft coming out there. And above the raft the ring looks like it's starting to take shape. And um, I auto leveled and as I said, these affinities are nice and quiet. All right, the print's uh, done and um, got my gloves on. Reading the directions, which is always hard, but good. Affinity is really um, smart when they say to take the uh, perf board if you're using it off because you don't want to rack the bed when you take a print off. And a lot of people grab the bed and scrape it and push it and that racks the bed. And the leveling of the bed and the nozzle height are the key parts of printing. So I've taken off the, the print right here of the perf board. And I'm going to take it off. So as you can see, I'm wiggling the knife back and forth here. Just under the lip there. And then, it's hard to do without a tripod. Oops, there we go. The I love you is recessed, and I this white PLA is hard to see recessed letters. I've done it in blue before, and it's much more uh, visible. But it is there, I love you. Um, and the ring looks pretty good. I have to clean up that edge a little bit. Is it time to print something different? Yeah. Okay. Violin. What do you want to print a violin? My ring. Your ring? Oh, your ring. I have to make you a ring, that's right. Papa forgot to make you a ring, I only made Mama a ring. Alright, as you can see, it's dark out. I've been printing on and off. Um, it's Sunday, so we went to the beach with the family at, at a local lake. and They're asleep now, so I'm printing again. I'm trying about 12 rings. So I want to bring like rings for every kid in the morning to show them what prints look like. This is going to take 2 hours and 40 minutes to do all these rings. The only trouble I've had during the day was there's a little clip back here. Maybe the printed bed will come back. I clip right there. The nozzle pushes that down to auto-detect the height and touches the metal underneath there. 
If the cuff board is slid under that metal, it totally throws off, of course, there we go. It throws off its ability to gauge the height. So you have to be careful with the cuff board in this area to make sure that box is away from the metal and away from these edges. Otherwise, uh, this printer's been awesome, and I'm really excited tomorrow for 10 kids at Putney Central School. They're going to use Tinkercad, and they're going to have a journal with screenshots of their designs, and they're going to um, have to keep uh, a list of problems they had and how they solved them, and they're going to scale their prints down to like 25 millimeters, which is about an inch. So we print fast, and uh, we, uh, what do they say, we uh, fail often, fail, fail quickly until we succeed. And the other rule the kids are going to have to have Monday is that they're going to have to make everything they print. No printing things they didn't design. Or significantly modify someone else's design. Um, and keep a journal. That's the, that's the rules for next week when I use this. And then we'll put it in, uh, in the school and start it, keep it printing as much as we can. The main thing you're going to learn really quick is that these are machines. And machines need to be maintained and they're sensitive to their environment. And even though you are really putting, uh, you know, STL files from 3D models on the screen, which are perfect all the time and don't change. You know, a 3D model always works if it gets cold. If it gets cold, it changes how a 3D printer works because it's melting plastic and the plastic's drying. The fan you can hear is on right now in, in this printer. Uh, so you got to teach kids part of that. It's not a magical uh, device like in Star Trek with the replicator. It is a machine and part of additive manufacturing skills are learning how to maintain that machine and get used to it and get it tuned really, really well and leveled beds and not bumping it or ripping it. If a bunch of different people, adults or kids, use a 3D printer, it gets racked really quick. So you have to treat it carefully and practice, practice, practice with small, small prints. So you make your mistakes in half an hour prints. Anyway, good luck out there. Best thing to do is just get started and uh, keep your own journal about how, uh, how you're going to uh, deal with things and what you learned, which reminds me I have to write this stuff down. Have fun out there.